most powerful name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Indeed, I am blessed. Uh, Sis Beauty, where are you? Seated. And my, I can see Mount Lobo is here in front. Our shepherdess, where? She's not here. How many of you are actually feeling the presence of the Lord in this place? Amen. Amen. There's so much you have. I have already learned so much within this short time. And I want to thank God for having brought us here because indeed his purpose is special. When you hear emotional sparkle, what comes to mind? May I see hands? I am just going to be a coordinator. We're going to talk. Interaction. I'm a teacher by profession, out of the classroom, but it's in your blood, isn't it? Amen. Yes, sis Nomsa, it's in our blood. So we will talk. I cannot be talking alone. It's not lecturing. What comes to mind? What, let me maybe break it down. Emotion. What is an emotion? They, they, they say there are seven main emotions that we have. We could even talk about the top five. What are they? Okay, then we need to cancel the presentation because it looks like we are not going to talk. Happiness, sure, for sure. Yes, happiness. What else? I, I can't hear. I can't hear. Anger. Okay, let, let's do it this way. Give me the positive ones first. Happiness. Excitement. They go with happiness. What else? So, joy. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> love, okay. Mm, you feel loved, okay. <laughs> all, all right, we are now getting into ones that are not in the main category. All right, let's look at neg negative ones. Yeah. Anger, yeah. sadness, yeah. fear, fear. Oh, yes, it goes with sadness, disappointment. Disappointment. When I used to be in the classroom years back, when my children would in, be line up, I would stand, you know, at the door, and actually I taught them something that I learned in, in you know, in one of the uh, workshops that we had done for improvement, for empowerment. If you are five, it means you top class today. So they wouldn't talk. They would just walk in. I'm a five today. I'm a four today, I'm a three, I'm a two, or I'm a one. And I would be very concerned if you would be in a two or one. And those ones, you would actually ask them to remain behind so that you can find out why are you a two today. Now, having said that, what are you today? Are you a five? Are you a four? Are you a three? Are you a two? Or are you a one? I don't know your circumstances right now, but Jesus knows what emotions you are going through. Because remember, we had Sabbath school last quarter about emotions, uh, not emotions, uh, seas the seasons that we're going through. Do you remember that? Yes. I don't know what, what season you are right now, but we all have a specific emotion at this point in time that we are feeling. All right? And... Now, the objective of today's presentation is to see how, you know, we can revive whatever negative feelings we might have. Okay? Good. So, let's look at the next picture. And it gives you what? What do you see on the screen? What do you see on the screen? You can see an eye. Now, our focus is going to be on the human eye. There is a lot that we can learn from the eye. If you look at that eye, what do you actually see? We're not doing any magic, ne? We're not doing any magic. But that eye has a story to tell. What do you see? Okay, put your hands up so that I can just, you know. What do you see? I want you to focus on the pupil of the eye. It tells you a story. Sadness, are you sure? Just, just look at the eyelids, look at the pupil. Who would like to give it a try, another try? Yes, Teresa? Sorry? 
It's like a flaming eye. This eye is, 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 is a happy eye. Let me put it that way. Because the pupil is big. It's dilated. Can you see that? It's big. And when it's big, it means that you are happy. That's what this eye tells you. Now, we're going to go a bit into biology. Can you see that? Now, we're not going to be very scientific. We just want to look at a few parts of the eye. What do you know? I can see the front section of the eye or the interior section of the eye or the segment. And there are main parts I want us to concentrate on. The conjunctiva. Can you see it? Where is it? You said, yes, where is the conjunctiva? Hello? I can't hear. The, do you know what the conjunctiva is? It's the thin layer that lines, lies in front of the sclera. Can you see the sclera? Okay, now in front of the sclera there is a conjunctiva. All right. And then I want us also to look at the cornea. Can you see the cornea? Yes. All right. What does the cornea do? Sorry? Sorry? I can't hear my brother. Oh, they, they, they forgot the parts of the eye. All right. Okay. Now let's, let's, let's leave the scientific part. And then I want us to look at the next part of the eye. I just want us to understand a bit of the eye. This is, of course, the back section of the eye. They also call it the posterior segment. And here I want us to look just at the retina. And then we have a few more. Um, the uh, optic nerve there is very, very important because this is actually where messages are being sent to the brain on what we see. Now, having said that, and having looked only at a few parts of the eye, I want you to get the person on your left, the person that's seated next to you on your left side. If you have nobody, you need to look on your right. All right, we did not say talk. I want you to get closer to each other and I want you to look at each other's eyes. If you have glasses on, please remove them. All right, thank you, thank you. Did you look deep enough? Yes, uh, yes, okay. Now, who's brave enough to tell me wh what is the color? Remember, the color of your eye is dictated by your pigmentation. So we will not find black people with green eyes. Yes. Now, uh, what is the color of your partner's eye? Most of them will be either dark brown or light brown, isn't it? Yes. Now, I want you to look again. Look at the size of the pupil. All right, uh, who has got a smaller pupil? You know, it's tiny, your partner. What could be the reasons for that? What do you think? Uh, sorry, 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 my, my dear people. If, if there's a lot of commotion, we can't hear. Um, those ones are even having lights on. If you do that, the pupil is going to shrink. All right, we want it to be natural. My dear sister, what did you say? The pupil is small. What, what are the possible reasons for that? Did you ask her? Oh, she, <laughs> she doesn't know. All right. And your partner? Oh, her pupils are big. And, and what did we say? When your pupils are big, it can either be that you are in shock or you are happy. Remember when people are in shock? But then it's, it's of sort of, it becomes glazy. It's a bit different. So I guess she's not in shock. She might be happy. It, it, it could also be the song, you know, because you, get, you got cheered up. All right, good. Who, who, who had seen anything different that you would like to share? Who had seen anything different? Yes, over there. Yes, my sister? Oh, hers is medium. <laughs> so does that mean that she's a three? <laughs> now, 
if, if she's a two, she's not okay, then she's very small. All right. At this point in time, I want you to remove your notepad. There's a small notepad in your package. Take your pen out, and I want you to sit prayerfully and list all the things that makes you sad in the church of God. Now, um, we, we, let's, let's limit them. Give me the top three main ones, only the top three. And I'm going to I'll ask you to share, hey? Not everybody, a few. Only three top things that make you sad in the church. That saddens you. Uh, we said only the top three. For some of you, there might be more than three. How sad, however. All right. Um, who would like to share from this side? I will only take two and then up there. I'll get there and down. Everywhere I will take two just to share. And I'm sure some of the issues might be similar. Yes, in front here, my sister, loud and clear. Gossip, discrimination, and judgmental. Oh, goodness. All right. Thank you, Sissy. All right. The second one is my sister over there with the, bled, bled, uh, the blue. Yes, maybe. Fornication, gossiping, and forgiveness. Toward okay. One May I ask you not to repeat what the first one said, Ne? Okay, uh, fornication stands out. What is the other one? Unforgiveness toward one another. So it's unforgiveness. Okay, all right. It's up there now. M yes, up there. Two from there. Um, my number one has been mentioned, so it will be broken families and disputes. Broken families and disputes. Shoo, shoo. Okay. Feeling, feeling lonely. Loneliness. And lack of support. Lack of support. Yeah, it's, it's, it saddens me already hearing these things because we're supposed to be, you know, sisters and brothers in church, isn't it? And we hear all these many things why we said. All right, on the left there, two. You may pick two, my sister, since it's so far. You can pick any two. Hello, ladies. It's a appreciation, power hungry, division. So, so, so it's lack of appreciation. And, of course, there's a power struggle on. Is that yes. what you're saying? All right. Okay, okay. Um, down here, or oh, there's the another one. Yes, a second one, please. Lack of unity in prayer. So there's disunity and lack of prayer. Shoo. The PhD syndrome that exists among us, us ladies. Oh, so it's like when I have a PhD, I'm there. No, it's the pull her down oh, syndrome. Oh, pull up down syndrome. Yes. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> Um, the abuse that ladies go through in the church, which it's is supposed to be a place that is supposed to actually be our safe home. Hey, and ab abuse. how ladies are, I don't know if diminished is the right word, but we are looked down oh, by look the males in the church. It's like, oh. you're not worthy or something. You're not worthy. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. Okay. My first one has been mentioned. The second one is when the well-known people and those who have money are the ones to be given posts at church. Oh, okay. Shoo. And the second one is gender discrimination in the podium. Oh, gender discrimination at the podium. So you also want to get to the podium? Not me, but others. <laughs> Remember, the podium belongs to the pastor, by the way. <laughs> Okay, there's a last one there. There's a last one. <laughs> okay, mine are segregation, selfishness, and hypocrisy. I think Mama talked about hypocrisy yesterday night. She up. Uh, there seems to be a desperate one, but we're gonna be unfair. Is there something that we left out? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, there at the back, just just shout, shout it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think there was something about the Pathfinder thing. I think, um, uh, you know, end it now does not seem, uh, you know, to solve the issues that we have because we have children being abused in the church and we do nothing. Are we silent about it? We are silent about it. And that's the second point I but had. But do we report in. it? They do report. That's okay. the thing. And then the second thing is actually the obsession around the objectification of women's bodies. Because the first question you ask is, what were you wearing? And that's in church. 
Ah, uh, very wrong. Okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Our brothers here, may I kindly thank you so much. One of you. Say, not, not what you just asked, but um, I'd say lack of role models, men, male role models. Uh, happy, happy Women's Day. He say, did you hear what he said? And do you have role models, female role models in the Church of God? All right. Um, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, you see, we have come up with all the negative in the Church of God. Now, we need to become conquerors. We need to be able to overcome. We need to be able to turn the negative into positive. We need to get our eyes to sparkle again. Do you know that the eyes, in fact, are the mirrors of your body? Do we know that? Yes. And um, the English say, a person's thoughts can be ascertained by looking in his or her eyes. That's why I've asked you earlier to look in each other's eyes. It's very important at church when you greet not necessarily the males, because there's also culture, but in your sister's eyes, because we are sister's keepers, to read because your sister's eyes will tell you a story. Good. Uh, let's quickly look at, can somebody read for me 22 to 23? Come on, Yom. We need to be active. Who's reading? You can even read from the screen. It's already on the screen, please. Thank you. I just want you to participate. Yes. But if then I be evil... Thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Sure, powerful. May God bless the reading of the word. That is powerful. What is the Lord trying to tell us here as his children? Jesus speaks of the eyes. And what does he say? It means all people should keep their eyes focused on him and him alone. There need to be a singleness of purpose. Not, you know, a multitasking event. We need to be focused and be focused on God alone and not things around us. And because I don't have much time left or any time left, I would like to bring this in and say, you know, we all, I want you to imagine you have a race to run. And you, have, you, you are in your lane, isn't it? Yes, now, have you seen the, uh, the athletes when they run the Olympics? Yes. What happens when you step out of your lane? You get disqualified. Now, so all of us here have a race to run. And as soon as we take our eyes off Christ, remember he's at the finishing line, then obviously we will get into serious trouble. Because what your eyes see, I don't know what you allow your eyes to see. Many of us here are guilty of pornography. Am I right? Many of us here are guilty of going places where you're not supposed to be. Uh, of doing things you're not supposed to do. What do we do with our eyes? Many of us are coming to these places just to come and see what others are wearing, what others are doing. So we're using our eyes for the wrong purposes. Isn't that so? Yes. And that is what Christ say we're not allowed to do. Because then we compromise his standards. All right. And then next, we need to be sincere in what we're doing. I've heard that we talked about hypocrisy in the church of God. We need to learn to be sincere as children of God. Um, we should focus on what is heavenly and not on trash and filth. That's why we're encountering all these complications in the church of God. We need to learn to take our eyes off what does not really matter. Because remember, it's all about salvation. And as we hear it as well, when we're standing here, what is your focus about? Is it about the dress code? Is it about other things that comes to mind? Or are you really focusing on the message? It's, it's a personal question. I'm just asking. All right. And then... Um, the next part, just to quickly run with it because of time, um, what does a yield sign stand for? What does a yield sign stand for? A yield sign stands for we need to slow down with the possibility of, of stopping. Now, you and I have 
this possibility too when we need to make decisions. Isn't that so? Uh, many a times we get at a crossroad and we allow temptation to take over. That's where the yielding comes in. What do you yield to? Do you yield to the right things or to the wrong things? We all girls, we've also been there many years ago. We all girls and you girls, the girlish things that you are doing. Everybody here, they say, have got a skeleton. Because nobody's perfect. We've all fallen short of his glory. So don't feel ashamed of what you're currently doing. What matters is what you will do after this. That's what is more important. So we should not yield to all of these other things. Let's quickly go to the next one. Um, I want you to look at this girl. I'm sure you know her. I'm just trying to rush through. Sorry. Do you know this girl? You know why I've put her, I, I like the message in the eyes. What do you see in her eyes? You see a lot of love. What else do you see? Sorry? Happiness. Happiness. And for me, when I look at it, I see sincerity in those eyes. Because it speaks loud and clearly. What, do you, what message does your eyes have? Are you walking around with a baggage and everybody that you see, you feel disgusted at, by the way, that's part of your emotions, your top seven? How do you feel about the next person? Your eyes have a story to tell. Remember, the eye is what of the soul? Your, the eye is the? It's the window, praise the Lord. It tells you the story of who you are. We said earlier on, it's the mirror. It reflects who you are. It shows what Megan is all about, or at, at least at this point in time. It's not to say her eyes always look like that, but I love the picture when I'd seen it. So a smile. I want you to smile for me. Smile. Give, give us your best shot. Smile. Uh, some people, I don't even see the teeth. Please smile. All right. Now, do you know that the smile does not start with the mouth? A smile starts with your eyes. So may you try again. But that's why your smile was not sincere. Your eyes first need to sparkle. And then you smile again. Smile. Uh, uh, some smiles are not okay. So the eye. <laughs> All right. Good. Uh, um. we, we, I don't have any time. So I'm in trouble. I think the group work. Let me just conclude. I will jump now. Sorry. You know, I know many of our girls here, maybe some of you are courting. Many of our mothers here, maybe of some of us are married. Did the sparkle of love die in your eyes? Is that chemistry still there? When you look him in the eyes, I'm talking to our mothers, those who have, some are widows, some are single. Our daughters, if you have, if you are in courtship, that is the right level, eh? Because when you're courting, you're going to marry, isn't it? Otherwise, there's no point to have a, rela a relationship. You're just wasting your time. So, I am asking you, when you look him in the eyes, what does it feel like? Can you, can you describe the emotions? What does it feel like? Or when he looks you in the eyes, Huh? Do you, uh, what, what do you feel? Huh? Like jelly? Huh? I beg your pardon? Sorry? I can't hear. The warmth, I love that. There should be warmth. Now when you look in the eyes of your sisters at church, what do they feel? Because remember your eyes can actually give us emotions. It sends us a message of how you feel about the next person. Just a look, you can greet me, but if you're so cold, you know, I actually feel immediately resistant because I can feel the sister does not have the spirit of love today. Is that how you feel? And is that how you make others feel? We have been told that we need to sparkle again. If, if, you, if you go... To the book, the last chapters of Revelations. I think it's 22 is the river of life. That's the last one. Um, it talks there about so many kinds of stones. 
We have jasper. We have the brimstone. What else do you remember? We have pearls. What else do we have? And what else do we have? Emerald. And, and so we can carry on. Can you see they're all beautiful, glittery stones? Are we together? Or minerals, if we want to be to the point. And so our eyes need to turn into sparkling diamonds today. We need to sparkle again. We need to see that twinkle in our eyes. How many of you know the song, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Stars? Yeah. Oh, do you know it? Yeah. All right, let's just sing the first part. Can you help us, brother? is speaking to us or has spoken to us very briefly and I have just switched on this candle and I want you to look at this candle and I want you to imagine the sparkle, the brightness in your eyes that can be brought back by positive things that you can do. Now, first of all, God requires us to have faith in Him because we are all fearfully and wonderfully made and His works are marvelous. Isn't that so? Yes. And that's what God wants you to do, my dear daughter and my dear mother, this afternoon. We need to have the faith of Peter. We need to step out of the boat. Because if we won't step out, we won't take that step of faith, nothing is going to happen. Your happiness, your sparkle, your twinkle lies in your own hands. And the change, you know, remember, when your light is on, you can actually brighten the corner where you are. You can bring light where there is darkness. You will be able to see the hurt and the pain of your sisters that are unwell. You will be able to build your sisters positively. And this is what the Lord requires from you and I this afternoon. So I, my prayer is that you may find your sparkle again. You do not have control over the past. Please embrace your scars and carry them as what? Carry them as you what? Yes, as your scars. Because you can only learn from that. Today, you only have today and you can make a difference today because you do not know about tomorrow. And therefore, let us use today. I want you to turn to the sister next to you and just say something beautiful about that sister. Please don't look at the outer appearance. Don't look at the outer appearance. Something that will build your sister. Say something good to the sister next to you, please. All right, thank you. Thank you. Now, very important... Very important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My sisters, I get you are now very excited. And I'm sure we can see the sparkles in your eyes. You may you take the hand of that sister. And you're going to have a brief prayer with each other quickly. Just one minute so that we conclude this with the Lord. Just bless that sister of yours. If you are not having a partner, please pick someone next to you. And pray that the sparkle, that the sister will be revived, rejuvenated once more. We need to live 
life to the fullest. Let us pray. Oh, Jehovah. Worthy, worthy is the name of the Lord. Thank you for having accorded us this opportunity to look into issues that makes us unhappy in the church of God. But Father, we are guilty as charged this morning because one upon a time we have hurt a sister or a brother in the church of God. And we plead, Lord Jesus, for forgiveness, for having used our negative state of emotions. Help us, Lord Jesus, to become more optimistic, to learn from you, and to be a blessing, a light, a little twinkling star that will brighten up the corner in the church. And what a pleasant view it will be if we can have so many little candles in the church of God. Surely, the love of Christ will dwell there with us. Surely, the Holy Spirit will commune with us. And even the neighbors around us will be able to see that these people are truly the people of God. Thank you, Father, for having brightened the sparkle in our eyes. May we remember today that a smile to the next person is a gift unto that person. Thank you, Father. We might not have done justice to the presentation due to time, but may you speak to us the little we have learned so that we may never be the same again. We pray it in the name of Yeshua, our Redeemer, and the one who has loved us first.